he mentions uh, extensively his time in the Maldive Islands. Uh, Uh, which are in the Indian Ocean, a uh, group of islands that are uh, fairly numerous and barely above water. Uh, they are one of the most uh, homogeneously, uh, homogene one of the most same <laughs> uh, areas of the world in terms of uh, religion. Uh, everyone is a Muslim, uh, and uh, they, they are very uh, conscious of that, and they talk about who it was who brought Islam to the Maldives, and they say it's Abul Barakat al uh, This is This could be the word Berberi. In, in Arabic script, that's a B here that little thing. Or it's a T, or it's a TH, or it's a Y, depending on what dots you put on it. This letter here is either an R or a Z. Then we have another one, that's a B, a T, a TH, uh, or a Y. And then we have another one that's an R or a Z, and then we have a good old familiar uh, long I or Y. So they say, okay, um, you put dots here and you have, have better, better E. And so you say, okay, this is the guy who brought Islam to the Maldives. Better, better E. Well, the I on the end means it's a of or related to something. So ever related to better, better. So he must be a Berber. You know, oh, and Ibn, uh, Ibn Battuta, coming from North Africa, would have recognized this fellow Moroccan, uh, uh, at least by reputation, as the person who brings Islam to the Maldives. And you can't deny that Moroccans ever got to the Maldives because Ibn Battuta got to the Maldives. So. Uh, and so you'll find a number of historical sites that uh, specifically say uh, the Maldives were converted to Islam by a Berber from North Africa. Now, someone else does it and puts a, um, uh, an add something here and makes this a B this a T and an R, uh, this a Y, and this a Z. They say, I'm sorry, it's wrong. This is the T, this is the B. So they say, that's Tabriz. Um, all you do is change the dots around and add a little tooth. That's what's one tooth between friends. And you go from Berberi to Tabrizi. Tabriz is the largest city in northwestern Iran. Uh, it is in Iranian Azerbaijan. Uh, and so you will have other uh, historical sources that sources here in, uh, that's in quotes, I mean, we're not talking about modern conjectures about all this, uh, that say that an Iranian from northwestern Iran made his way down to the Maldive Islands in the middle of the Indian Ocean and converted the people to Islam. So it's either a Berber from Morocco or it is an Iranian from Tabriz. Or it's neither one. Uh, and you know, if you checked neither one in the box, you probably came out right because there is a city, a seaport in Somalia that can easily find on a map uh, named Berbera. And it is, to my mind, virtually certain that a Somali seaport right there on the Indian Ocean is where Mr. Berberi came from. Uh, now, the point of this 
uh, of this exercise in Arabic spelling is that when you have but one source and you have no, um, incidentally, the, the, the source that Ibn Battuta uh, cites was an inscription in which the dots were not, apparently not, a, not uh, written and the inscription has uh, lasted through the 19th century and then disappeared, so nobody can see it anymore. But when you're dealing with a single source and you, uh, and you make an inference as important as what are the trade or travel patterns of people in this uh, late medieval period in the Indian Ocean, uh, you really have to be fairly careful. And uh, being careful uh, is something that I don't think the author of this chapter was. Uh, or um, I don't think he um, devoted as much care to the precision of the writing as, uh, as he should have. 